Hey everybody, this is Mario here with the Keeping It Real Estate podcast and today my guest is Wendy Stewart. How are you, Wendy? I am doing well. How are you, Mario? I'm doing wonderful. So, second time on the podcast. I know. I can't believe you invited me back. I know. Well, th- it's funny because I think you're the first person. Well, I had Matthew Wheatley and Maria individually and then they came together. So I think they're the only ones that have been on the podcast twice, but you're the only person that's been on it twice by yourself. Oh, boy. So <laughs> that's that's your big superlative it's, for today. It's it. I'm putting it on my resume. There you go. Um, listen, you should not judge your success by whether you get invited <laughs> to this podcast or not. Um, but, you know, obviously the first time that we talked about, we learned a lot about your career how you became a real estate agent, what got you to this point. Um, So today was going to be more of a cash flow talk about how are you doing? Where are things with business for you? We are close to Thanksgiving. So did you already start planning your 2020? And is there anything that you're looking forward to in 2020? We can start from there. Yeah. So, uh, well, yeah, we start planning our 2020 in June, July, we're already kind of making dates for our Stewart team events because we do three big events every year. So we're already pre-planning. Actually, they just messaged me. They're working on flyers for our Easter egg hunt. So those things have already been kind of in the works um, from the mid of this year. Um, so the three events that you do, tell us a little bit about that. How do you split them throughout the year? So we do, um, we do three major events. These events are for our past, present, future families. We call them our families. We don't say customers or clients on the Stewart team. So it's, uh, anybody that we have, you know, that we're working with, that we have worked with, they're invited Pretty much anyone in our database is going to be invited to uh, the Stewart team events. We do in the Easter time, we do an Easter egg hunt. Everybody gets invited to that. Then in the summertime, we do an ice cream social. And towards the end of the year, we do our big event, which it's called It's All Because of You. And that's more of like a happy hour, kind of a, you know, an adult. More of an adult. More of an adult. Yeah. It's interesting that you not only invite your past clients, but you're also inviting people that you haven't done business with. Is that right? Yeah, we're inviting everyone. Um, the reason is it's it's a way to kind of touch our people that, you know, kind of remind them, hey, you know, we're still here We without being, how can I put it, <laughs> without being like the sleazy kind of salesman. To sell seat. Right. It's, here's an event. You're welcome to come. You know, it's, it's a reminder. It's another touch where we can, you know, message them call them and say you know you might not be ready now but come get a feel for us come hang out you know get to know us so if you want to get invited to these all you have to do is reach out to the steward team and pretend that you want to buy a house next year pretty much if you <laughs> if you've ever like come to an open house and put your name down you're going to get an invite <laughs> that's pretty awesome what's going to happen now is you're going to get like 37 realtors at your <laughs> at your event well, honestly, we have had a few <laughs> try to come to uh, the oh happy wow, hour, that's but fun. no, it's just for our families. Very cool. Yeah. And is that is that your main focus for marketing to your database? Is, are you basically basing most of your sphere marketing with the events? So there's three events through the year, or are you touching them with emails and postcards through the no, year? Or we're not. We're actually using the three events because we pretty much start. Um, our egg hunt is going to be, I think, April. So we're starting by like February. We're starting, you know, the invites, the the subtle hellos, and that um, once the event is finished, then we are doing the thank you, thank you for attending, or sorry you missed it. Then by then it's like already time for the ice cream social. So we're already sending, you know, the touch for that. And then by the time that's done, it's another thank you. And then it's time for the next one. So we space it out pretty much. So we're touching them, you know, throughout the year. That's, you know, it's funny that you said that you not only send a thank you, but you also send an, I'm sorry, you missed that. I've never heard that one before. That's a new one. Well, it's, you know, it's another way to just, you know, uh, remind them that we are, the local real estate team they want to work with. Yeah. And you know what? It's pretty cool that every single time they're hearing from you is because you're bringing something to them. You're providing value every single time. So when 
they see that phone call from Wendy pop up on the phone or the email coming in from the steward team. They're not thinking, I'm like, oh, here we go again, asking me for another referral. Oh, here comes another valuation from my home. It's, it's, they're inviting me to somewhere so people get that excitement. Like, oh, I wonder what's next. Absolutely. And that's always what I try to go for. Like I said, we don't want to come across as the, the sales mini type of people. It, we always want to keep it um, relationship based, you know, uh, same thing like with Wendy in the cloud. I'm not there doing real estate. I'm, I'm highlighting your, your business. So it's the same type of thing. We don't want to talk real estate. We want to, we want you to come. We want to love on you and um, get to know you more. Yeah. And, and the best part about it is that it fits your personality perfectly because that's just the way that you are. You're just a big hearted person and everybody knows that. And so I, I really like that you've, you've found ways to market your real estate business that, um, that are directly, um, relatable to the person that you are, because sometimes you see someone and, you know, they have certain qualities that you may find interesting about them, but then the way, the way they market and run their business, it doesn't necessarily fit their personality because it might be done by a third party company or there's decisions being made um, that, you know, maybe someone feels like, oh, well, we, we, we can't keep doing this customer events without asking for business, you know, right. but, but it seems like, you know, you're pretty set on the way that you do this. And I'm dead set on the way that I do it. Yeah. And um, it's not going to change. It's, you know, and if one person shows up or a hundred people show up, that's what it is. Yeah, that was my next question. How's participation on them? It depends. The Easter egg hunt is insanely popular. The ice cream social too. Sometimes this year, the the happy hour, I think we did it a little bit too late in the year. So that is something that I learned. Um, we did it in October last year. This year we did it in November. And I think it was cutting it too close to Thanksgiving and the holidays. So it wasn't um, as insanely popular as it was last year. So, you know, things you learn as you go. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing with the customer appreciation events. It's really, if if you ever see a real estate agent putting together a customer appreciation event, like, just just be kind to that person because that <laughs> person is in pins and needles because yes. they don't absolutely know what to expect. We just did last weekend, um, we did a picture with Santa customer I appreciation saw, event. I love that. Um, and, and I'll be honest, you know, like I felt like, we did our invitations, we did our Facebook event, we've reminded people with calls and text message, and then we followed up the week of the event to remind them one more time. And, you know, so you feel like you did everything right, you get the right photographer, you know, we had, of course, the real Santa. <laughs> and, um, and you feel like you did everything right. But when you know, started at nine o'clock in the morning, and when nine rolls on, and you look at the watch, you're like, Oh, man, here we go. It's like make or break time. Right. And thankfully for us, it, the entire event was busy. And, you know, we, we really got more than we wanted out of it in terms of um, the pictures and the excitement. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really touching to watch, you know, kids come up with their Santa letters, which I didn't tell anybody. They just kind of, several families, they thought of this on their own, like where the kid came with a Santa letter Aww. because they're like, we're hand delivering this thing to you, dude. Like <laughs> we're, you're not going to blame it on the mail, you know? Um, so that was pretty exciting. And to see kids cool. just generally like pour their heart out and Aww. tell him in their dreams, you know? So it was, uh, we got a lot more out of it than, than, than I expected for sure. So, but, but you don't know, you don't know when you do them, you know, you, you hope for the best. That's all you can do. And you know, just good intentions. That's all you can do. P you know, put a positive mindset and that's, that's what it is. Yeah, so it, it, you if you do it, you have to do it because you're enjoying the process. Yes. If you're doing it because you think this is going to turn into, you know, three people walking in and asking you to list their house, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to be terribly disappointed. Nobody talks business at, at these events. We don't want you to. That's not the purpose. That's not the point at all. Right. So, yeah, it's not for that. And um, it, it's just... It's about them, you know, and especially like our last event, it's all because of you. It, it truly is. And that's why I called it that. It is all because of these families that we're able to wake up every day and live out our, our passion and our dream. So I'm very thankful to them. Without them, you know, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't absolutely not be where I am without the families that have um, allowed me the opportunity to serve them. 
you know, what a humble way to put it. Like, seriously, like, I, I, I mean that in the best possible way, because, because a lot of times I feel like in our industry, the real estate agent puts themselves in the middle, kind of like, I'm the star of the show um, type. And, and it makes me a little uncomfortable sometimes. Uh, but what makes me comfortable is when I speak with someone like you, that it's like, we don't exist without these families entrusting us. And so because we understand that they're trusting us with something big, you know, by, by direct correlation, you, you're, you're, you're taking it seriously. You're going out of your way to make sure that you do right by them because you're understanding um, what's happening here. And what's happening here is not that they are so lucky to work with you is that you're so lucky to have been chosen by them. I'm so lucky. I always feel so blessed and I don't care what they're buying. I don't care if they're buying a trailer or if they're buying, you know, a, a million dollar home. It doesn't matter to me what it is. It's just the dream of what they want and knowing their story. I, I like to know their story. My, my, um, you know, I'm primarily a buyer's agent and I do like to, um, every buyer gets, I sit with them first and I just want to know about them. I want to know, well, why are we here? What, what, what do you want? You know, what, what exactly, um, are your goals? And, um, last week I closed one for an amazing, um, Mexican single mom, an mm -hmm. immigrant. And, um, she was a domestic, she is a domestic, uh, survivor. Um, domestic violence survivor. Yes. Domestic violence survivor. <clears throat> Her story would give you chills, Mario. Like mm -hmm. it's one of those where like, I'm going to get her in a home if I have to give up every penny of commission to get her in this home. That's what it was one of those, you know what I mean? And she, um, she pulled through and she had all these wonderful people supporting her up until the very end, you know, helping her. And she built a beautiful dream home. And, um, that, those are the stories, you know, that's, that's why we do. And I know you too, you do it with a lot of heart. And those are the, those are the ones that just mean the world. Yeah. And, and soon, when you start selling real estate, you'll soon realize, I think I, I always tell this to new agents, when you first start in the industry, you become very aware of everyone's story, whether it's, you know, like a story, obviously as impactful as the one of this customer that you're talking about, or whether maybe it's a different type of story that, um, or a less tragic version of it, or maybe it's just something totally different, but everyone has a a unique mm -hmm. story that led them to decide to, that they want to purchase a house or that they led them to the decision of selling a house. Mm -hmm. And so when you're a new agent, I think you become very aware of that. And But sometimes I think with time, agents forget about the stories. Agent for, J, agents forget about the stories and they become more concentrated on the numbers. Mm -hmm. In the, I need to sell 10 more houses to hit my 100 transaction goal for the year or whatever. Right. So they don't take as much of the time to learn the stories, to figure out what's going on in these people's life um, and empathize with them and, and try to connect with them on other levels. Uh, I absolutely agree with you. This year, I kind of handpicked who I wanted to work with. Um, I, I didn't have um, for myself a goal in mind. My goal this year was growing the team and, um, you know, growing our brokerage. Um, but personally, I was very selective about who I wanted to help. I wanted to help people that wanted to help themselves. First of all, if they were buyers and kind of, you know, I like, I like helping people that have mm -hmm. credit issues and you know, that, that think all hope is lost. Those are the people that I love working with and my sellers. I was also selective about who I wanted to work with. So for me this year, um, I didn't probably, I didn't nowhere near hit the numbers I hit in previous years, but I certainly had an enjoyable year and my quality of life this year was way better. Well, and that's, that, that's where it starts getting into that area where there's, there's not enough emphasis to what quality of life can do for someone because we are an industry that has glorified the hustle and has glorified being a workaholic and has glorified a host of toxic traits that will lead surely to failure in your relationships and in your personal life. Yes. And so because it's glorified those things, sometimes, you know, it's hard for people to get to that point where they choose that quality of life um, over, you know, over the numbers. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes those 
the decision doesn't have to be mutually exclusive, but most often it does. And mm-hmm. so i um, glad to see that you are have actually picked the right thing because because that this is how burnout happens. Mm-hmm. And, and we see it all the time. You know, you see the grumpy agent, you see the agent that doesn't enjoy it anymore. You see the agent that's doing every, everything they can to try to get out of the industry as quickly as possible. You know, they want to slide into some coaching role or some management role or some, some other role because they can't, the transaction stuff is just overwhelming to them because they've put it ahead of their personal life for too many years. Oh, I totally agree. So I, my kids are older and they're able to express to me, you know, how real estate, um, obviously real estate has done so much for, for me and my family, sure. but also that comes with a lot of sacrifice and you're absolutely right. We do glorify the hustle and I'm, I was one of those people working. I was showing houses with flashlights at night, you know, um, and it did cost me a relationship and it cost me time away from my children that, I just will never get back. So I was very conscious this year um, with my daughter. It's her last year in high school. My son started college that I was going to be home every day at four o'clock, no matter what. (laughs) I I wish there was a panel of agents that spoke to other agents. That was a group of agents that have taken a 30% hit on their production, but find themselves in a better place in life, generally speaking in their personal life <clears throat> because again back to glorifying the hustle that's not that's not who gets put on panels and so especially being that this is um it's an industry that 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 has so much to do with family because whether it's the agent or whether it's the people you're working with you're generally working with a family not a person and when you're an agent generally you have to be supported by your family not you know it's not a job that you go and come back from you know, somebody wants to see a house at a time that, you know, on a weekend or something, I have to rely on my family to be able to pick up the slack at home for right. me not being there. And so for an industry that relies so much in the, you know, having a strong family to be able to um, do your job and are to be able to work with consumers that are families, we we do a terrible job overall at teaching agents and, and just putting the message out there that you shouldn't lose sight of the things that are um, that are truly important and the things that are going to matter most um, in the future. Agreed, 100%. And I tell people, my kids are older, but agents with smaller children, like, it's just not worth it. Like, stop, smell the roses, and um, really, you can be selective, you know, you can, and you can still, you know, make your six figures. There's still a way. It's about balance. And I thought I was balancing it all but I wasn't and yeah. it's it's really came down to my kids saying you know we we don't even we haven't seen you in four days yeah and that's the real coaching that people need mm-hmm. the real coaching that people need is not some dude yelling at them obscenities and telling them to pick up the phone <laughs> and call 50 people that's not the kind of coaching that's really productive in my opinion the coaching that's productive is when you get home and your kid tells you like they miss you because they haven't seen you in a couple of days that that will do more in terms of realigning your priorities than anything else and um i i just i'm very i'm a big proponent of it i'm Mm -hmm. a big proponent of it i think i I think there's too much emphasis in the hustle i think there's too much emphasis in in a culture of working yourself to death and um ruining relationships for money um that you know i just don't it that's not the way how that it works for me. I, I can't, can't get down with that. Yeah, no. And for me, it's a lesson learned, you know, lesson yeah. learned. And, um, once you know, you, you can do better. And, and that was my goal for 2019. And, um, it brought, I finally, I found joy this year and a lot of peace in the way that I strategized my business and my home life. Yeah. And, and I think you become a better, you become better at strategizing, when you create some additional constraints for yourself Mm -hmm. because you're saying hey you know now you you've found the life that you like the schedule that you like more or less in 2019 come 2020 you can put more emphasis back on um, maybe some production goals without leaving you know the margins that you have developed otherwise and so 
Um, it allows you, it makes you have to be more purposeful about what you do during the time that you're on. Yes, it makes you absolutely. So you look at every hour, you look at your calendar a lot more closely and how you're spending your, your productivity hours and what are you really doing? Um, you know, when you are prospecting, how are you, what are you doing? What, what did work? What didn't work? And maximizing your, your, your daily hours. Yeah. Shifting gears a little bit to what's going on on the market, you're primarily in the SoundCloud area, which I don't do much business <laughs> in, but but I find that interesting because even just three years ago, if you would have asked me about real estate in SoundCloud, it was kind of like its own town. It was kind of like, I think it kind of lives within itself a little bit, but I feel like SoundCloud now it's becoming kind of like the town that people move to from other areas in a way. Um, is, is that a fair assessment? What are you seeing? That is a very fair assessment. Um, Osceola County is just booming. There's so much happening in Osceola County with Neo City. Um, you know, not just, and then, you know, St. Cloud as well. But then with the hurricanes, we had a shift and we had people from Puerto Rico coming to Osceola County. And um, it's just, it's insane the growth that we have St. Cloud for me in particular I've seen it you know over the last I would say four years just you're absolutely right people are coming from other areas to St. Cloud we have A-rated schools Um, it is still small town kind of feel um, but there is a nice diversity of people now and and a lot of new construction right a lot of new construction yes a lot which is (laughs) People that were born and raised in St. Cloud don't like it too much. Sure. But well, there's <laughs> there's that thing about change, right? And like everybody feels like their little town is getting away from it. them because the big, bad construction guy, which some of them are big and bad yep. or just bad. <laughs> um, but, but I can see that, you know, people feeling like their little town is getting away from them. Yeah. And I can see it. it, it I mean, it still has the feel and the people are still great, but there's, you know, I think we're seeing just a small amount of growth. There's still so much more development that's going to be happening over the next 25 years or so in Osceola County and especially St. Cloud. Um, what are the price points looking that like? Are you guys still seeing a lot of appreciation? Because I feel like the prices there were like, if you compare it to Orlando, it used to be significantly cheaper. But then when I looked a few months ago, I was like, yeah, that's not the case not anymore. Not the case anymore. So, you know, new construction for, you know, a, I'd say a modest four bedroom, two bath. You're going to be probably in the 250 range, uh, which is still, you know, significantly less than other areas in Orlando. Sure. But um, it's, it's, we have a lot of older homes in St. Cloud too. And our, we call them the state streets. Mm-hmm. And um, those homes, like you could have 100 year old homes selling for, you know, two hundred and twenty thousand. So, wow. so a new sale is. Are kind people of, are people scooping those up and remodeling them? And yes, some people. Yeah. I mean, but for the most part, that's why new construction is so popular. Because if you compare it, new construction to a resale, it's you know, if you can if you can make um, the new construction happen for let's say ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars more, and you're going to get a brand new home. Yeah, there's, there's a l- certain appeal to that for sure. Yes, yes. It's cool. Um, and tell me a little bit about the brokerage, because I know that now you guys have an office in Metro West. Yes. And an office in St. Cloud. Yes. And the new office opening in. Oh, you ah! thought you were going to get that. <laughs> I tried. I tried. Yeah, there's, I mean, we're, we're growing. <laughs> <laughs> we're growing. So that, I mean, we'll, we'll be expanding our horizons um for sure in other areas and um the property pros is growing at a wonderful beautiful pace and as i was telling you we um we are we're not for everyone you know and we do stick to our commitment of building a familial culture and um uh we had a we had some setbacks this year, but then we we took some leaps too. Here at the end, we just signed on a, a, some awesome new agents, so it's growing. Yeah, I think it's funny because for a long time it seemed like the race was to get all of the um, who could get the most agents. That was the thing yes. that was going on for a while. But now um, 
quarter three and quarter four of this year, I noticed a little bit of a change in the mentality from brokerages. They're no longer um, looking for number of agents. They're kind of focusing a, focusing a little bit more on quality, which is a good thing for agents. I love that. I yes, love that. yes. We know. I mean, I've always been very close with the agents. When agents leave us, I still cry. Anthony tells me I need to be better about that. But I, I get close. I get attached. Um, just yesterday, I um, we have a private Facebook page, and I, I ask, I do every year, ask all the agents, give me your word for the year, and I always write their name. I write their word, and every single day, I pray over that agent and their word every single mm-hmm. day. And I know them. I know their families. I know their kids. I know their their dogs' names. I know everything about our agents. So. Um, I want to, we want to stick to that. You know, we want to, we want to stick to the, the culture and, and being a family and doing things together. And cause we do, we do a lot together. What's your word for the year? Peace. 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 My word for 2019 was joy. Mm. And then for 2020, it's peace. I just want to be peace. Well, my daughter's also <laughs> graduating. So, um, there should be some, some good peace happening for mama Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> she's the younger one, right? She's the younger one. Yeah. She's yeah. So no more kids in school for no more kids in school. Uh, all done with that. We'll see what she, she does. And, um, it's going to be interesting to, it's already weird with my son not being in school, mm-hmm. you know, and I'll be like, do you have school today? And he goes, I don't go to school. <laughs> <laughs> Are you asking if I have a class today? You know? <laughs> so it's, it's fun and at the same time it's starting to get a bit sad you know i'm like yeah. gosh should i have had another one you know like what happened there's still now? time uh no mario i'm gonna be 40 <laughs> in about 20 days oh my god 40 is the new 30 are you kidding me i know that's what they say right i don't know but um no there uh, i might get a dog <laughs> <laughs> another dog <laughs> there you go keep getting dogs keep getting dogs that's what i'll do so yeah, um, the steward team, we, we grew too. I added two new team members and that's, that's kind of my focus right now. My little, my little steward team baby. And, um, we have good things coming up for 2020. Trying to get them sort of like up and running and up and running. And, um, we're, we're tight knit too. the steward team. They, um, you know, anytime we have a lot of people that do, um, interview for the team. And I always say, it's not my it's not my call. It's, it's everyone on the team gets to interview the candidate Mm -hmm. and, um, it's, it's, uh, it's everyone's decision, not just mine. That's interesting. A very democratic process, if you will. It is because we're so close. We're so cohesive. The team meetings are literally at my kitchen table in my home. Um, we vacation together. We're close. So it can't just be my decision anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, it has to be a fit for everyone yeah there's nothing that will send a real estate team in a tailspin faster than bringing the wrong person in absolutely and i've had people that i i was like no guys we're picking her and they're like nope (laughs) you got overridden i got overridden and that's what it is you know and so we um they 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 actually approved of our two new our two new recruits so the team is growing yep very cool. Are you expanding the areas that you're working in? So we have, I mean, we have agents everywhere, both on property pros and steward team. Um, I primarily do Osceola County, but we do have, we cover Orange. We have Citrus County. We have agents mm. in Citrus County, which I can't believe. Um, we still have Volusia County agents. So yeah. we're, we're still everywhere. Very cool. Um, what do you think is going to happen with the market in 2020 in our industry more specifically? Um, I don't know. Like, I don't see it for, I mean, I look at it. I mean, I like I was telling you, the only thing like I could really, I don't think like, uh, the, the Zillow and all that, I don't see that too much for me anyway. And my team being too much of a competition, we focus so much on the relationship. I don't even, to be honest, try to entertain that. (laughs) Not that I'm trying to be ignorant to it either, but I'm going to focus on what 
I know how to do, and that's to be relational. And um, I'm going to work on on my sphere. I'm going to prospect. And I have kicked that up into high gear for sure, I will tell you, in this last quarter. And that is a big part of my focus and our goals for next year is the old school mentality. You know, we're going to have to knock on some doors. We're going to have to make some cold calls. We're going to have to open house, and we're going to have to do the things that... um, You're going to have to work for a living. You're going to have to work for a living, right. You know, you can't just... Buy internet leads and, you know, hope. Yeah. even though, you know, we do do that for the team, it's, there's a lot more that goes into that, that ne- if you want to have longevity in this business that you're going to have to do. Sure. So, um, the only thing I see, like I was mentioning to you earlier is, you know, everyone's an agent now. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that was funny. What is it that you said before we started that? <laughs> The DNV and the yes. DVP are most being the same building. Same building. Same building. You go get your, your Florida driver's license. Go get your real estate license while you're at it. It's like everyone is a realtor, which is... Should everybody be a realtor? I, you know, I don't know. I'm, I say there's enough sand in the sandbox for everyone, but holy cow, this year it was like a lot of people. I did lose some um, people that I had been working with for years because their son or their daughter or their monkey's uncle got a real estate license, so... That's just one of the things that, uh, one of my hiccups for this year. Yeah. You know, we, I've seen it a lot too. And I think, I think it's going to start tapering off a little bit. I think one of the good things about all the downward pressure in the industry from big tech and, you know, from everywhere really is that we've become more sophisticated about what we do. And so, I feel like not sufficiently, but the bar has been raised. The entry point for the bar has been raised just a few notches because like you said, you know, there's quite a few brokerage in, brokerages in town that I know of that they want to take a new agent. They're like, you know, we've, we've, desi- we've decided as a company that the effort required to train a brand new agent and the things that we have to put in place are just not, you know, worth the investment for us to do that. So there's a lot of brokerages already not entertaining that idea and i think what's going to happen is if you're a new agent that just got your license and you go knock on the door on five brokerages and three tell you we won't take you and then two say we'll take you with a 50 percent split and you gotta pay us 300 dollars, and you gotta pay us this and you have a twenty thousand dollar cap that you have to pay oh and by the way any leads that we give you that doesn't go towards that cap that you're paying so the agent is like you know they may still be kind of like excited Right. about it and then they you know after 60 90 days they put together one transaction and they see their paycheck is like one thousand one hundred dollars for a month worth of work and they go like uh probably better flipping burgers somewhere right better not quit my day job yeah so i think that's what's happening there's a lot of people that are getting licensed but the bar is definitely getting raised i think it's going to be i think it's harder for those people to be able to kind of just 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 come in the industry right away and and do something about it I feel like nowadays new agents, because <clears throat> even just 10 years ago, if you were a brand new agent and you went door knocking and you, you know, you were good with cold calling, you could probably make some business happen fairly quickly. But I think nowadays it's so specialized. I mean, you go door knocking, what are the odds that people are even going to answer their doors anymore? You know, mm-hmm. uh, maybe if they're expecting you, maybe if they know you're a familiar face in the town or in the neighborhood, maybe if they've seen your, um, your listing sign on the neighborhood. But for the most part, I think if you go to a sort of like a strange town and you start a door knocking, people are just going to look through the ring camera and be like, Hey, what do you want? <laughs> Cause that's what I do when somebody knocks on my door, you know? Right. Right. No, yeah, absolutely. Weren't you going to go door knocking in St. Cloud the day we went to the beach? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. When you guys decided to the have whole, your... The whole agency went to the beach and Mario was going to yeah, go your door team, knocking. Re, your team retreat. I'm like, all right, on my way to St. Cloud to do some door knocking. <laughs> yeah, no, I. you're right. I mean, it's, it's uh, for sure, it's harder. I remember when I started, it was like, uh, you know, brokerage, it was much easier to, to interview with brokerages and they were just, they were kind of taken... Oh, anybody yeah. right yeah. so yeah i think it's good that we've become picky and uh, listen i'm all for i started out as a part-time agent but sure. i um i wanted to do this full-time it wasn't just oh i'm gonna do one or two deals you know this is something that i wanted um and something that i was passionate about so i i do feel for those people that are you know wanting to make a career out of it but it is hard 
you know, I don't know who keeps telling people it takes six months. That's what I always hear. You know, it's going to take six months for me to like make $70,000. You know, I love that. I'm like, where are you guys going to school? Like, I don't even get this. Like, it did not take me, you know, it took me a long time. And uh, when, when I knew that I really wanted to do real estate full time, I had a full time job and I had a part time job. And when I knew I wanted to do it full time, I got another part time job so that I could start saving so that I could make the transition responsibly for my family. And so when things didn't close when they were supposed to, I wasn't freaking out. I had savings. Yeah, well, making the transition <laughs> responsibly is not a thing that's really taught a whole lot to new agents like I remember hearing a conversation amongst brand new agents about the credit cards that they just took out to the, so that they could fund the next, you know, 90 days of their life until they get their first closing. And I'm like, and you, who told you you're going to get a closing in 90 days? Because you may, you could, mm -hmm. but you may not. You may not. And now you have a maxed out credit card and still don't have anything going exactly. on. You know, like it's it's really unfair to people the way it's portrayed that everyone yes. should be a real estate agent. Like the way that, you know, it's just, it's not for everybody and it's not for everybody. Not because they don't have the capacity. It's because, you know, there is a certain level of masochism associated with what we do sometimes. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't put yourself through that unless you truly love it. Absolutely. It, it's not easy. It isn't for everyone. You really have to, um, there's a lot, I would say a lot of sacrifice that comes with um, being a successful agent and making a career out of it. Um, once you get to a certain level, yeah, you can, you know, be pickier, I guess, about your hours yeah. and all that. But um, to get there is is not easy. No, it is no, not yeah. easy, and you know it doesn't take six months. It took me a good two years to where I was able to close one a month and leave one job, then leave another. But in those two years, I stressed myself. I had lost thirty pounds. I got the shingles because I was so stressed. I mean, <laughs> it's, it is not easy, and I do wish that um, someone kept it real, you know, with me and said all that. You know, no one did. Yeah. No one did. And yeah, there's a difference between being a dream crusher, which I don't think it's right. And just being honest with someone, which I think it's, it's the right thing. Um, because it just, you know, it's funny because before, um, I, twice in my life, I tried to be a police officer. It's kind of a, it's kind of funny. Both times something outside my control happened in the last minute, which made it so that I couldn't go forward. Um, but one of the things that they do when you are becoming out, when you decide that you want to pursue a career in law enforcement is they seat you in a room with 50 other people that are pursuing a career in law enforcement. And I think they do that by design, by the way, because you get to look around the room and you get to see whether, how you stack up with these people. Cause they tell you up front, like they're in training, you're going to fight everyone that's sitting on this room, male and female. You know, they tell you all this and so you're looking around the room and you're like, all right, I think, I think I got like, I got 70% of these people covered, you know, like I'll be all right. But the other thing that they do is they put this video on the TV, not on the TV, in the projector, um, that it's probably like a 25 minute video. And all it is, is clips that are probably the longest one might be three or four minutes of police officers getting killed on the line of duty or getting beat up in the line of duty or both. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's kind of like a 25 minutes of this, just back to back to back to back. And, you know, you have a small female police officer getting beat up to death. And then you have this giant, you know, bodybuilder looking police officer getting shot in the head. And you have, you know, back to back to back. And what they're doing is they're painting the real picture. Mm -hmm. They're not... They're not trying to scare you away. They're not being negative about it. It's funny because some people in our industry would say that that's, you're just being a dream crusher. No, 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 no. That's not being a dream crusher. That's telling you what you may encounter if you decide this is your chosen profession. And so out of the people sitting in the room, literally half of them don't, you have a packet that you fill out or whatever, and then you turn it in at the end of the thing. And so but they make it very clear too. Like you, if you leave through this door, it means you're turning in the packet. If you leave through that door, it means this is not for you. It's a 50, 50, right? Literally 50% of the people will walk and be like, Nope, not for me. And so 
that's what I think real estate needs. Real estate needs that movie that shows people like the single mom with shingles that had three closings back to back, quit her job because she thought it was going to get consistent and then didn't have another closing for six months thereafter. That's it. Yeah, um, I agree a hundred percent. I really wish I'm glad that I was able to figure it out on my own. And I had a broker that said, Hey, you know, you, I can't tell He could have told me at any point in those two years, you're doing great. 24 deals a year. You're not part-time anymore. You can quit. But he said, you know, your budget and you know, your comfortability level, you know, when that time will come for you, you know what that number in your savings account is. It's and, a, yeah. um, you know, it's different for everyone. Some people have a spouse and they can do it. You know, that's great. But for me, I really would have liked some more of the real stuff that we do have going on now. You know, yeah. now we do have a lot of these panels and you keeping it real, real estate and all that. Um, I just hope we continue to be authentic and raw with the conversation for new agents. Again, like you said, we're not dream crushing. I just want to be honest about the career. Yeah, I've met this week. Um, I'm the most antisocial person. I've always said that. <laughs> but this week I so happened to meet two agents in passing that are newer agents to the industry. Um, both of them are girls about the same age, but I wouldn't want, I, I wouldn't want to find myself in a dark alley with them. Like scrappy. I mean, they're ready. They're the right agent. They're the right new agent. And so, you know, what I felt was like, we're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. The right information is being put out there mm -hmm. because these are not like deer in the headlights, you know, type agents these are agents that i know i know okay. for i will put money on it today that they're going to be crushing it they're going to be doing great and they're going to be crushing it because they're ready for it um they came from the service industry so they're not scared of working hard they're right. not scared of going back and working hard like you know they're used to the belligerent drunk mm -hmm. you know that they've had to deal with a thousand times so they're just kind of they're, they're just scrappy they just mm -hmm. and they're professional and mm -hmm. they you know they understand service. They people that come from the service industry also they understand that you know better service, more money, and so you, that just kind of gets ingrained in them. And so I felt good about that. I felt good because it was like you know, two new agents in one week. Both of them, I would have never known that they haven't done this for five years because the confidence that they carried and they you know the willingness to learn the things that are tangible that are going to make you better. It, it was all there. That's awesome. I do think that people with a service industry background do well. I have noticed that. Have you noticed that? Yeah, I did. So yeah. it's funny because I've talked about that before. Um, I, you know, there's people, it's, it's always tricky when you're doing one of these, because when you're doing one of these, someone will latch onto the one thing that you said, like, not, not everybody, <laughs> like, fuck you. Like, listen, listen, we have to talk in generalities. Okay. But I would say, generally speaking, the best real estate agents have a background on either education, education, absolutely, or service industry. Yeah. And if it's both dynamite, right? Those, in my opinion, I've always seen them as being, like, I agree with you a hundred percent. I have seen, um, some of our best agents were bartenders, you know, um, and yeah. education. I have a background in educate well, kind of, you know, but, um, but teachers, principals, we have assistant principals at our brokerage and they do really well. They do really well. But like yeah. you said, you know. Yeah I, yeah, I think the bartender one is, it's huge. I mean, one of my favorite agents, Darby Shields, mm -hmm. um, bartending background. Uh, my top LO, she used to be a bartender. Um, two other real estate agents, I'm not going to say their names because I don't know if people know or not, but um, that are also my very close knit of people that I highly respect, mm -hmm. um, uh, bartenders, Jenny Weimer teacher, mm -hmm. um, you know, so there, there's something to be said about that, that education background, and that s service industry background, the service industry one is, I think it goes without saying, I mean, it's just, it's a tough, it's a tough racket yep. and, and sometimes you make money and sometimes you don't make money and maybe that maybe the valleys are not as long as they are in real estate, but there's certainly valleys because I worked in the service industry and I remember, you know, for no good reason, you'd go an entire, you know, Thursday through Saturday where you're making 80% of your money and no one came in the club and you're <laughs> like, all right, I guess we don't have any money. You know, <laughs> it's like, all right. Yep. That's, that's what, you know, it prepares them for real estate it when things don't close, estate. you know, when things don't go your way. Yep. And they don't, 
they 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 sometimes well i would say 80 percent of the time they don't so yeah Yeah, there's always that there seems to be a monkey wrench in transactions a lot of times Uh, sometimes before i have one this week that's happening after closing oh lovely yeah after closing (laughs) monkey wrench after closing um so it's a it's an interesting business there's definitely people from all backgrounds that get to excel but i think uh, people with a bartending background and service industry background and, and education, they they tend to do extremely well um, in here for sure. Agreed. Um, the last question that I had for you was, um, what do you think about 2020 in regards to, um, I talked, to, we talked about the market a little bit, but I wanted to be like more specific, the industry. And we talked a little bit about the broker just kind of going through toward to more of the experience age and um, is there any trend like that that you guys are seeing that um, for 2020 that you think it's going to become really important because I would say like 2019 was the high tech year what's 2020 going to be hmm that's interesting um I don't know Mario I mean I think uh, you, 2019 I would say yeah high tech would be a good good uh good thing for 2019 for 2020 i think like we had said a lot of the um part-time kind of you know a a cleanup on the industry clean up in aisle clean clean up in aisle real estate yeah and i don't know how to put that politically correct you know i don't want to offend anyone but um i think we're gonna see a big um i think we're gonna see a big shift in the etiquette of agents in the professionalism, the ethics department. I think a lot of things are going to be cleaned up and I think it's going to be good. Lovely. I would, I would I, embrace I, that with both arms. What do you think about the new NAR policy for um, the marketing of listings that you can't market them for more than one day before putting them on the MLS? Um, <laughs> so, you know, everyone, myself and we would get a listing, you throw it on Facebook, right? Yeah. And it's like you start, I mean... I, Almost everyone, I didn't. You did, and you're 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 Mario. You follow the book. You're good. Um, no, I certainly was one of those that would be like. No, I mean I would do it sometimes, um, but you know what? What the problem that it became for me was really a problem of logistics, in that I felt the times that I did put a listing, say, and started marketing it on Facebook with a mar- with a waiver um, for MLS entry for a week or whatever what would happen was I would get 50 calls from agents that are working with buyers. And so then I had to explain to them and then it just became more, it became more work than just putting it on the MLS. And, um, and the times that I would do that, it was because someone might be moving out of the house. So we only had like three exterior pictures while they're moving out of the house. And we were trying to, you know, Mm -hmm. get some, um, some momentum going for them before it hit the market. Um, But then, but yeah, it just became more trouble than it was worth for for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe it was the way that that the ads were targeted or whatever. But it just ended up being like we would get a bunch of you know ten thousand views on a post, and then it would turn into fifty realtors calling me, like not direct messages from people saying, "Hey, I would like to see the house," or "Can I get more information?" It was like they would see it and be like, "That house is awesome," and they would call their agent. Yeah, I mean, I don't think for for us it's not. I mean, other than now we're we're obviously not throwing it up on social media, you know, until it needs to be listed, but it doesn't have too much effect for us, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because the rule wasn't made for people like you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the rule was made for the people that are abusing the heck out of it. I know. And that's why, you know, I'm, I, it's conflicting to me because I'd like people to be able to speak clearly about things. But on that token, I've been almost, um, irritated by some of this st- stuff in Facebook that I see from agents because it's like NAR is so out of touch. I'm like, wait a second. This was voted by a group of se- 700 people, I think it was, that are mm-hmm. all agents. Mm-hmm. Like, who do you think voted for this? You think it's the Wizard of Oz? You think NAR is the Wizard of Oz sitting on a cloud somewhere making decisions? Like, they talk about this, like, if it was some, like, distant entity that has nothing to do, like... No, this was voted in by agents, Mm -hmm. probably agents that are having a real problem on their market with agents being shady about it and putting listings on Zillow and Realtor.com 
for months before putting or weeks before putting it on the MLS because they're trying to get both sides of the transaction. That's not good. And that's definitely not good for the seller, no matter. And and so then people are like, well, what if my seller wants? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Your seller never asked you for this. You are telling your seller that you think this Correct. is best for them and they're agreeing with it. That doesn't mean this their idea. That doesn't mean this is hindering them now. Yeah. And you are right. I have seen the people that are complaining about it are the people that were doing exactly what you're talking sure. about. So again, that's why I do feel like 2020 is going to be a year of, of cleanup of a lot of that too. Hopefully, right? Like we can hope and pray that, that, that a lot of that stuff does get cleaned up for yeah. For those of us that are doing the right thing. And, f and listen, for the sake of the consumer. Absolutely. For the sake of the consumer. If we are going to be successful in fending off a lot of this big tech Silicon Valley sort of desire to take a piece of the real estate industry, if we are to be successful, it's going to be through service and local market knowledge because that's what we have that they don't have. They, mm -hmm. they don't have a way to replicate that. Not yet. Anyways, they don't have the robots, you know, going and, you know, learning about the local market and the local restaurants yet. <laughs> but um, but if if agents continue to do things that are shady, then we don't have a really good case to make if that's a large percentage of real estate agents. Like if there's a significant number of real estate agents putting listings on Zillow for a week before it hits the MLS, like that's not good for that seller. You know, and people would say, well, we got to sold at full price. Well, maybe you would have gotten multiple offers and gone above full price. Right. You know, anytime you restrict the amount of people that have access to view the thing, you're restricting its ability to fetch the highest possible price. Yeah, no, I agree 100% with you. And um, hopefully it'll nip that in the butt. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll come up with the, the next they'll come up with <laughs> the next thing. Thank you so much for coming in, Wendy. You're so welcome. We it's just always did, nice. Just so you know, we just did another hour. So. Oh my goodness, you and I. <laughs> yeah, it's proof that we can talk talk with no end in sight, <laughs> no matter how many times we do this, and we'll do it again for sure. Thank you, Mario. I appreciate it. Tell people how they can get in touch with you if they want to learn more about the Stewart team. Um, well, they can go to our Facebook page. It's Stewart Team FL. If you're looking for us on Facebook, or you could just give me a call or text 407-433-5544. Thank you, Wendy. Thanks, Mario.